Okay everybody, in this quick video I just want to show you the raw mechanics of using the regression analysis in Excel to investigate uh, the case study 2. So in this particular example I kind of made an arbitrary choice. Uh, my goal here was I wanted to predict my Y, like the dependent variable, is spending on season passes. And then I thought there were two things that I wanted to focus on as potential predictors of how much people spend on their season pass. One was their uh, game comp rating, which is a continuous variable. And then secondly is membership status uh, dummy. So keep in mind over here, we know that uh, there's two possibilities. People are either free to play or they paid for the battle pass. But if you're going to actually use these sort of categorical labeled variables in regression, we have to create what's called dummy codes. So in this particular instance, since there's only two statuses, free or uh, battle pass, uh, we have a single column that's the dummy codes of zeros, if you go all the way down, or ones, right? The one signifies they paid for the battle pass, and uh, zero, most recently, and zero, uh, signifies that they're currently on the free to play. So uh, these are these two predictors were selected a little arbitrarily. I, I just wanted to make sure that I showed you both uh, a continuous predictor and a categorical predictor. And also notice I moved the variables around. I, I moved the columns here such that uh, the y variable thing I'm trying to predict and the x variables more most importantly are next to each other. Uh, the other thing to keep in mind if you're ever going to run regression in Excel is the basic rule is the rows must be complete, meaning there should be no missing values. Missing values can be a huge issue uh, in the practicality real world of running regression, but in this case we have complete data. So we just go to data analysis. We select our regression. And you'll notice I've already selected all the things here that I want. Notice from my input Y range, I selected both the header and all of the rows. And then for the input X range, I selected column L all the way to M. So I have two predictors that I'm going to use. I click labels because I do in fact have the labels up here on the top. And I also want the confidence interval of the parameter estimate. So this will give me a 95% confidence interval for the betas uh, for game comp rating and membership status dummy. It's really useful. I want to put my results in a new worksheet. So I already named that. You can give it any name you want. And we can ask for a bunch of like sort of additional ways to investigate the quality of the regression. For simplicity right now, I just selected the residuals. We'll see what that is. Okay, so we run this. Uh, I already ran it, so I'll just hit cancel here. I already ran it, so we go to our results. And also, I expanded upon this. Uh, you know, usually it comes with lots of, uh, to a high degree of decimal points, uh, not super useful. We'd want to format this in a much better way if we're going to actually report this. But for now, uh, we can take a quick look uh, together. So overall, let's let's not worry about the individual predictors for a moment here. Let's just take a look at how the model's performing overall. So R squared is about 0.77, meaning uh, our two predictors alone can account for about 77% of the variation in our outcome variable. That's pretty impressive. Uh, we do in fact have all 1500 observations of an R sample size. Now for our NOVA, uh, the model here, this is not particularly helpful for this uh, simple uh, model, but it, but it is telling us that for our two predictors overall, both combined collectively are highly, highly, highly significant. Uh, no problem there. Now here is where the results are particularly important. This, this is sort of the big payoff table that we really focus on when we run a regression model. So I'm gonna just sort of simplify these uh, decimals here for a second, just so it's a little easier to look at. Here we go, go to three decimal points. So this actually gives us our model. This is telling us that if we, per the regression analysis, if we wanted 
to predict spending. The model is best, uh, the best linear fit is, well, our, our intercept would be 73.52 plus uh, their game comp rating. So we see that it's a positive coefficient there. So that's telling us as someone's comp rating uh, goes up, it's indicative that we would estimate that they spend even more in game. And then for the and then for the membership status dummy, we also have a positive coefficient. Now, but since it's a categorical variable, to un to interpret this, we have to remember which one was the zero, like what category of membership is zero and which one is one. So in this instance, uh, if we go back and look, we'll realize that zero was coded as the free-to-play players, whereas those who paid you know, as historically for the battle pass, where those uh, were coded as one. So since this is just a basic math equation, we know that if we put a zero here, replacing membership, this would cancel out. But if we put a one here, that would tell us that uh, we would estimate in the one is, is the people who pay for battle pass, we'd expect that they spend on about $42 more on average. So that's our model. And of course, uh, we also know there's a some error, right? We 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 uh, we didn't build a perfect model here. Um, so, with respect to the fact that we didn't build a perfect model, let's take a look at the residual output. So, that was one of the boxes that we checked. Uh, notice that you know we have all the observations. So that equation that I just previously wrote, that for each individual person. If we did the math all the way through for each person, these are the results that we'd see here, the predicted spending on season pass. This is the math equation being rendered onto this individual. Now, we for these people, these 1,500 individuals, we actually saw what they really spent. So while this is our prediction based on the model, we have the capacity for these people to see how much we missed. And that is the residual or the error. So notice here, we predicted that for observation one, they would spend about $16.20, but the residual says, oh, wow, we missed by $7.55. Let's sort of just clock here. That's roughly about $23 and some change. Let's go back to the original data and take a quick look. And sure enough, see, that was what they actually spent, right? So the residual is telling us, here's how much our model alone, just those two predictors, uh, we guessed, but here's how much we missed. Now remember, the important thing about uh, residual analysis is it's very useful, uh, which we don't show here, to sort of assess is the model performing reasonably well. There's a bunch of assumptions that underline uh, regression and multiple linear regression, and residual analysis uh, affords us the ability to check those things. But another practical thing that I've noticed people sometimes forget is like, well, why in the world do we even care about building a prediction for these 1,500 people when we already know exactly what these 1,500 people did? Well, of course, the answer here is, well, we don't particularly care about these 1,500 people, right? We're, we want to build a model, and that will help us predict uh, spending for those individuals who we did not observe or looking towards the future, right? So we don't, so we can look at the residual here for those uh, observations that we actually saw, but in practice, if we think the model is sufficient, we can actually use these, uh, uh, this equation to make best guesses about those individuals uh, that we haven't directly observed yet. Okay, so. Let's take one last quick look here at our actual uh, regression output. So we already kind of made sense of these coefficients. So we, we see a lot of results here, and they're all communicating similar things. So the default null hypothesis in regression is that a particular predictor, in this case we have two, each predictor 
the null hypothesis is typically that the, it, the if, that it's zero, right? If it's zero, it doesn't matter what particular value somebody is when it comes to game comp rating or membership status, uh, their dummy code. Because if it's zero, anything that you put there just multiplies out to zero, so there's no effect. But if we look at our results here, uh, we can see based on our T statistics, which we can interpret as Z because we have such a large sample size, or just look at the P values, or look at the lower and upper bandwidth of these betas, referencing the coefficients. All three of these ways are telling us the exact same thing. That is, these effects that we are estimating here appear almost certainly, given that the p-value is way, 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 way less than our typical uh, criteria of 95% confidence, are significant, meaning they're not zero. Now, we don't know if they're exactly this, and that's illustrated here by our lower and upper 95% confidence interval of the parameters, right? We don't know for sure what the exact number is, but based on our analysis, we are extremely confident that it is not zero. And furthermore, given looking at these lower and upper boundaries, we are highly confident that game comp rating is, has a positive relationship with spending. And those individuals who have used the Battle Pass or paid for the Battle Pass in the past, compared to those who didn't, if we write, we're comparing people when we use categorical variables, the comparison says, yes, indeed, those who use the uh, Battle Pass, who have bought the Battle Pass, do in fact overall spend more, which is not particularly surprising. Okay, so, at this point, we can deploy this exact same strategy even if we incorporate more predictors, uh, more complex categorical variables, uh, or even if we're just doing simple bivariate regression where we just have a single individual predictor related to our outcome. So hopefully this uh, video helps make it a little more clear how you can quickly deploy uh, Excel's regression tools and how to make sense of it.